Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, as a nationwide search begins for Frederick the Tiny Midget, Superman, in his guise of Clark Kent, is shocked when Professor Robert Archer announces... With both the midget chap and my diary in his possession, the boot will undoubtedly be able to discover Sir Hubert's secret. And when he does, Mr. Kent... What then, Mr. Archer? The boot can and will control the world. What? Yes, Mr. Kent. He will be our absolute master. Before we proceed with today's exciting episode, here's Superman in person to speak to you of something he considers very important. Come in, Superman. Hello, everybody. What I have to say is not new. You've heard it before, and you'll undoubtedly hear it again. But in my opinion, it is important enough to bear frequent repetition. Perhaps you've already guessed that I'm referring to the subject of tolerance. Now, believe me when I say there is nothing that can contribute more to lasting peace and happiness among people than an attitude of understanding tolerance on the part of each of us toward others. Wherever tolerance is lacking, there is prejudice. Wherever there is prejudice, there is hate. And where you find hate, there you will see unrest and unhappiness, an atmosphere in which it is impossible to find peace. Now, it isn't difficult to be tolerant and free from prejudice... Just remember that boys and girls, men and women, are either nice people or not, regardless of their physical appearance or the religion they practice. And that there are good and bad in all races and religious groups. Learn to judge people on the basis of character alone. And give everyone the same kind of break you'd ask for yourself. Reject all prejudices. Be fair. Be tolerant. <laughs> And now, the adventures of Superman. A three-foot midget named Freddy, the smallest man in the world, has become the key to a baffling mystery of tremendous importance. For although he does not know it, the tiny man holds the secret of a catastrophe scheduled to strike the Earth on February 1st. Then, when Freddy disappeared, Robert Archer, a former assistant to the midget's late master, Sir Hubert Clay explained his startling theory to Clark Kent. As you know, Mr. Kent, before Sir Hubert died, he instructed Freddy to find me and to give me the equation X is to Freddy as Y is to Sari. Yes, I know, Mr. Archer, but what does it mean? Who or what is Sari? Uh, Sari was a physician or healer, as he was called, whom Sir Hubert and I knew in the Far East and who did much of his work when his patients were in a state of hypnosis. He was a hypnotist? Uh, yes, yes. And he instructed Sir Hubert and me in the technique. Oh. Now, I believe that Sir Hubert hypnotized Freddy and then told him the secret of the disaster which is scheduled for February the 1st. Oh, and you mean if you would hypnotize Freddy, he would reveal the secret to you? Right. And I would then act to prevent the disaster. But now, with Freddy in the hands of the boot, I... I'm afraid I'm too late. Now, wait. What makes you think the boot knows the meaning of Sari and, and the rest of that odd equation? The boot has my diary, Mr. Kent, and that fact is recorded there. Oh, I see. He'll force Freddy to reveal the equation. X is to Freddy as Y is to Sari, and then he'll know how to obtain Sir Hubert's secret. Well, no, it may not be so easy as all that. After all, Freddy's no fool, and he's not a coward either. He may Believe not... Believe me, Mr. Kent. The boot will make him tell all he knows. And once he has the secret... He'll be master of the world. You keep saying that, Mr. Archer. You must have some idea what this, this secret of Sir Hubert's is. I have indeed, Mr. Kate. Well, then, for heaven's sake, tell me. I, I may be able to do something about it. Impossible. You can't. No one can without knowing everything. 
And I know very little. Well, then tell me what you do know, please. Very well. Long before most scientists became interested in nuclear physics, Sir Hubert Clay was working on an equation relative to the radioactivity of the sun. The sun? Yes. Sir Hubert was one of the first to expound the theory that the sun is like a gigantic cyclotron bombarding space with shooting neutrons in a constant chain reaction. It was, he said, only our atmosphere which checked the reaction and saved our Earth from being destroyed in one great atomic explosion. Yes, I've heard that theory. Go on, please. He had a notion, a very wild notion, I thought then, that this tremendous radioactivity generated by the sun might somehow be harnessed and used for the good of humanity in medicine, science, industry. Yes, I see, but... but uh... now, now I think Sir Hubert not only perfected his equation but devised a means of using the atomic power of the sun. Yes, I remember Freddy saying that Sir Hubert was arranging a demonstration of this at the time he was killed by the boat. I'm sure it was a monstrous sun weapon of some sort. Well, it, it, it sounds incredible. But if it is true, why did Sir Hubert tell Freddy that a dreadful disaster would strike the world on February 1st, unless you stopped it, that is? I've been thinking about that. All I can imagine is that Sir Hubert had arranged this demonstration and was murdered before he could either go through with it or stop it. You mean he had set up some, uh, some mechanism or whatever it is and timed it to go into action on February 1st? Perhaps. But where could it be? And what? I have no idea of either where it could be or what it is, Mr. Kent. But I am definite in the belief that if the boot learns the secret from Freddy... He mustn't learn it. I've got to find him before he can, somehow. You? Well, how can you find him, Mr. Kent? Well, I... Well, the, the, the chances are he's in Metropolis, or not far from Why it. Why do you think that's so? Because the police and the FBI put out an alarm for him two hours after he left this apartment with Freddy. He's a noticeable man himself with his limp, and, and little Freddy is even more noticeable. So he wouldn't dare go far before he went into hiding. Uh, perhaps not. But Metropolis is a huge city, and the boot may have accomplices here to hide him. I know, I know. But if he's in Metropolis, I'll find him. If I have to search every building, every room, every inch of the city. You're mad. You can't possibly do that. That's what you think. I'll see you later, Mr. Archer. So long. His face grim. Clark Kent hurries from his apartment to begin, as Superman, the terrific task of searching every inch of the great city for the boot. Meanwhile, in the deep cellar of a colonial mansion, set in the middle of a park-like estate in a metropolis suburb, the boot faces Freddy menacingly. Well over six feet tall, with powerful stooped shoulders and a hawk-like face with eyes like green ice, the boot looms over the tiny man who has backed into a corner. Freddy's face is bruised and cut. One small arm hangs limply at his side, and he raises the other defensively before him. Fuck you. What did Sir Hubert Clay tell you to say to Robert Archer? He, he didn't tell me anything. Oh, you still defy me. Very well, then, I but, will... But I can't tell you anything. Nothing at all. Yes, you can, you must. Now tell me, what message did Sir Hubert give to you for Robert Archer? He didn't give me any message, I tell you. None. Mm. Let me go, let me go. Talk, talk, you stupid little one. Carny idiot, talk. I won't. All right, all right, I'll tell you. Let, let me go. Let Very me... well. Now tell me what he said quickly. My, my master said I was to tell Mr. Archer X is to Freddy as, as Y is to Sally. Ah, what nonsense is this? That's what he said. I swear it. I was also to say the equation equals the first day of February. Act quickly in the name of heaven. X is to Freddy. Freddy is your name. Yes, sir. Why is to Sally? Who or what is this Sally? I don't know. On my word of honor, I don't know. Sally. Sally. Seems to me I have heard or perhaps read. <laughs> yes, now I remember. It was in Archer's diary. I shall look again in the diary. Perhaps there I will find the explanation. As Freddy stands by fearfully, the boot whips Robert Archer's diary from his pocket and begins riffling swiftly through the pages. Archer told Clark Kent he was not sure whether or not he had identified Sari in his diary. 
Did he? We'll be back in a moment to find out, so keep listening. Look, gang, we don't like to preach any more than you like to be preached at. So please forgive us if every now and then one of us sounds as if he's making a speech from a soapbox. But there are some things that are so important to you and to me and to everyone that we feel it is necessary to bring them to your attention just as a reminder. Like, for instance, what Superman said to you earlier in this program about tolerance. He's serious about that, as all thinking people are. Because, as he told you, the practice of tolerance is the only way to ensure peace. And who isn't interested in a lasting peace? Particularly when the memory of a long and bloody war is still fresh in our minds. So keep that in mind always, every day. In all your associations with people, in work and in play, practice tolerance. When prejudices come up, as they undoubtedly will, make yourself overcome them by remembering our Declaration of Independence, which guarantees an even break for everyone by stating specifically that all men are created equal. That is our American heritage. Don't ever forget it. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. In the cellar under the colonial mansion with the midget Freddy, the boot who has been reading swiftly through Robert Archer's diary suddenly looks up, his green, ice-like eyes puzzled. Sally, it says here was a physician in the Far East, a friend of Archer and Sir Hubert. Do you know of him, midget? No, sir. I, I never heard of him. Could it be that Sir Hubert took him into his confidence? A mere physician? Ah, that may seem possible. Yet, yeah. wait. There is another entry here about him. Tonight, Sari explained to us how he had obtained beneficial results with many patients by placing them in a state of hypnosis. Fascinating talk. Is all their rights? But that, that's strange, isn't it? There must be some connection. X is to Freddy as Y is to Sarah. Sarah's physician, hypnotist. Ah, I do not see the... Wait. Could it be that... <laughs> it could be... Oh, please, sir. Don't... Don't look at me like that. I wonder. Don't... Don't look at me like that. Could this be the... His hawk-like face tense, his green, ice-like eyes luminous now. The boot seems to stare through Freddy and the tiny man quails. What is the boot thinking of? Has his keen mind grasped the significance of Sir Hubert's curious sentence? What will happen? A superman high in the air above Metropolis pursues a task which is monumental even for him. The task of searching every nook and cranny of the gigantic city for the boot and Freddy. There's a thrill a minute in store for you in tomorrow's exciting episode, fellows and girls. So be sure to listen. Tune in, same time, same station, for Chapter 8 of Dead Man's Secret on The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time. This program came from New York. Stay tuned to your mutual station for Captain Midnight, which follows in just a moment. And right after Captain Midnight, you will hear Tom Mix and his Ralston Straight Shooters. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>